All right. So we've completed another headline. We're still live over here on Twitch, and I wanted to go ahead and do my quick recap of the headline. Everything we saw, talked about, everything, just just basically everything when it comes to the headline. Basically, our headline recap that we do. If you guys are more curious of a more concise, um, more like if you're basically you're a fan of more of the very YouTube esque YouTube style videos, Caro does a more concise version of the a recap of the headline. You can check out his channel uh, for that. But we're going to go through everything um in the headline and talk about all of it because all of it's super fun and uh that's just how i like to do things i'm gonna go ahead and refresh this page i don't okay now, now the button works okay now it's officially a video okay cool cool so we're gonna go through everything we saw in the headline because we saw a lot of things in the headline and a lot of it was really really cool so i'm gonna play part of the video and we're gonna talk about the things that we saw so now we expected or at least i expected there to be um stuff going into mars um, and that's pretty much what we saw. I mean, based on what we could look at in the description, they mentioned Mars in the description, as well as the timing for the update. Mars isn't next week, it's the week after, so it kind of lines up perfectly with everything. Um, so oh, give us your likes. Also, yeah, this is a W one, so I'm liking the actual stream. It's actually a really, really good one, so definitely like the stream. This was actually a W headline. All right, so we're going to play the video. You can take a look at what we had here. So. They're showing off Mars and Mars looks really, really cool. You can see a lot of different like customization options here. It's a lot of people were really big fans of AIS back in the day. Um, I played all versions of AIS. Um, and of course, to this day, the best version of AIS is still um, is still AIS Vega, I believe is what it was called. Um, and AIS Vega was very, very good. Don't get me wrong. But AIS Vega was also very linear, right? It was pretty much just a few set of attacks. <laughs> They did over and over again. What made AIS Vega shine was mostly the um, mostly the fights you used AIS Vega in, right? There was actually one very particular trigger that made AIS Vega really good. This, on the other hand, looks sick. Like, looks really, really cool. AI, or, uh, Mars looks really, really good. You can see the different weapon types you're going to have access to. So they had four weapons they went through. Um, let me go ahead and go back to it. So we saw the Gram. We saw Nidhogger. Or it's Nidhogg, I guess, just with an R at the end. It's weird. Hydra, which seems to be the gun. And then we have Silica, which that seems to be the bow. Actually, it seems to be a bow, actually. So bow users rise up. Chad, is that like the bow? Like, yeah, it looks like a bow, right? That looks like the bow stuff. That's pretty cool. You have to pick two main weapons and two. Uh, I'm sorry, two main weapons and three sub weapons. So we can kind of see here what the skill trees are looking like. We have a bunch of different skills you can actually activate. Um, I'm not sure where you're going to get Mars skill points from. Uh, it looks like you start out with one. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. So we'll have to see where you get the actual skill points from, what content you have to do to get a hold of them. But a lot of really interesting things. It shows a couple of skills we can see here from the very beginning. I'm not going to go through them in detail. I will like, cover this when it actually comes out. I'm sure plenty of people are going to like pause and read every single skill and then try to like figure out exactly how things work together and so on and so forth. But again, we'll wait till it comes out. It's going to be out in like a week. So a bunch of different skills. All just looks really, really good. Like all of this looks really cool. I'm actually looking forward to this being added into the game. Yeah, this, this just that's just kind of a pog situation altogether, man. Mars looks really, really good. Um, so along with that, they're adding in the Mars Training Center, where you can basically just test out Mars in general, right? Like, yeah. Mars batteries, so you can use your Mars and you can actually fight a target and test out your different skills on it. It's, it's rock. The return of Rock Bear has, has come back, chat. It looks like there. Oh, there's an option to have him attack and an option to have him super far away and stuff like that. OK, that's pretty cool. Hopefully they add this for just regular stuff. So Rock Bear has returned. Um, Alio region's getting an update, so they're basically adding Crimson Realm into Alio. They're bringing up the levels. Super cool here. Uh, I know people are like, oh, but what about Stia? Stia is getting this update next. So I, I I get that, you know, Stia hasn't been updated in a while. We want new deck space. We'll get it eventually. Don't worry. Don't you worry. But uh, it's just Crimson Realm. They're also adding in um, higher ranked versions of the trigger quests for Dark Falls Interception as well as um, Aegis. I don't remember what the exact name of it is. Yo, you guys see that there? Look out. What is that? What is that a weak bullet of some sort? Some form of a blight? Also, I'm noticing like there's moments where he's using his weapon and it's like a scythe of some sort. Like right here, that that does not look like a sword. That looks like a scythe. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see um, what they decide to do. New features and gameplay elements. First thing, the thong chat. My character's ass. Um, they're adding in a new innerwear. This apparently is going to be a um, an arcs uh, an arcs ID backdrop for collecting titles. So for the title collectors, that's super freaking cool. Um, Rip Wingard, too early, <laughs> way too early to tell that's the case. We'll see. If it is Rip Wingard, it's about time. Wingard has been on top for a very very long time, but I wouldn't say Rip Wingard just yet. People said the same thing about Aridim. Um, let's see. Parts available for Genesis points and more Genesis point parts. Super cool there. Uh, so this a little bit concerned here. I'm not the super bit happy, but happiest about this. It's cool that we're getting build parts for weapons, but I wanted holograms, basically the ability for us to display our own weapons and our own camos. Um, this doesn't mean that they're not going to do that, but it does mean that their their focus is on making a bunch of these, which like again, these are cool, but I would rather have the holograms display my own weapons because I collect all my weapons. <laughs> this is just going to be nice overall. Um, you're able to see what categories things are in. So you can see, okay, well, light exploit, dark exploit uh, are all in category E1, so you can't put these together. But, you know, Defi uh, series uh, P1 is in category E4. So those can be on the same thing. So that's really nice. Makes things a lot easier for people to look at. An AC scratch, pretty solid. This looks cool. I mean, we got some Caro fashion in here. Very, very pog. Glenn and Crawford. And then Ina and Man in swimsuits. I think these look really, really cool. People are really gonna like the Man in swimsuit. So, and then of course some camos. We're not gonna go too far into AC scratches. AC scratches are AC scratches. Nothing too crazy there. If there's something crazy I wanted you guys to see, I'll, I'll tell you. Don't worry. Um, and then of course they talk about the Lasiel update having more to do with Mars. Essentially, uh, a big thing about this is they also mentioned that. Oh, I mean, Lucille's already crashed. It doesn't matter. So they're adding in a new um, new boss ruin. It's a Gunigam. This is basically the dude from uh, Harukatan from base PSO2. So very, very cool. Very excited to see another boss. That means possibly a new camo as well. Um, we do have a new 10 star unit. No EX augments. Fun fact, no EX augments ever on units. Thank God. <laughs> they answered in the operations reports. Never have to worry about EX augments on units. It's not going to happen. They said no. <laughs> you know, the funny thing was, is when we were talking about the possibility of EX augments on units, it was like it could also be insanely just unbalanced to add EX augments to units because of all the different effects you could probably combine together. And then, of course, the raw potency. So I'm like, maybe they won't do it for that reason. And that's exactly the reason they're doing it. They're like, we want to keep the game balanced. It would be too strong. I'm sure you could rebalance the game around it. But honestly, I just I, I'm glad it's one less problem to have to deal with. Now we just have to pray that they never do any more than 4EX augments on a weapon. And then we're golden. As long as that's the case, and they just make new EX augments and new combinations. We're in the golden age of gearing. We have one one uh, problem is already taken care of. So we'll have to see. Of course, this is more more with ac scratch i'm gonna yeah, we'll skip the videos for now i wanted to try doing the videos guys but the videos are just they take too long so of course we see mars we see the skill trees they're talking about adding limited time tasks for completing mars to get some really really cool stuff and then go ahead and continue on to mars training center like we mentioned basically it's kind of similar to that of like the training center option a mission that we had back in base pso2 where you could fight you know rock bear and things like that seems like it has different options for you to fight in different ways very very cool um, and then they mentioned that there's going to be arcs. Uh, there's going to be an arcs record for field dash West Redham dash. Um, and I was immediately thinking, man, hopefully they thought about the whole Mars situation and they like, you know, reset the actual Mars uh, meter upon going into there. Because if you can use some shenanigans with Mars, uh, it's going to be it's going to be funny. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting situation. Um, so we also have, of course, the increased combat sector, Crimson Realm for Alio. They mentioned that it's going to cycle through the different zones every single day. So you're going to go from uh, Mount Magnus to Resil Forest to Vanford Lab. So each day you'll have a different one. And of course, new limited time tasks as well. You want to keep in mind doing limited time tasks is going to be important because if any of these limited time tasks include anything like augmentation transfer passes, you're going to want to get a hold of them as soon as possible. And then they talk about the new improvements, uh, the, you know, the category system. This is again really, really cool here. We talked about why this is okay, but I'm not super happy for it. Um, and they mentioned down here, Nameless City Exploration will support all ship matchmaking. 
This is super cool. They're doing more all ship matchmaking. I've mentioned this beforehand. This is definitely something that needs to happen a lot more consistently. Um, so yeah, you guys heard Finn. Yeah, he's over here yelling. But um, more all ship matchmaking is a W all around. AC scratch again, we see what it is. The zero glide. I was mentioning the emote line scratch. Uh, line strike, this is going to be very popular because it shows off your rating, it looks like. That's pretty crazy. Um, that is that is a fun flex. I think that is cool to have in there. But it's an AC, so it's an AC item, so good luck. Any other scratch or spend millions in Maseta. Um, new elements act to the seal. So here's an interesting one, right? So we were talking about, you know, uh, customization when it comes to uh, to our to our Mars. Um, as you can see here in the corner, his photons are red, chat. That's red. The weapon the photon portion of it's red. This is red here. Nowhere else does he show up as red. It's red right here. So it's possible that maybe it follows your weapon. It's possible that maybe there's some customization involved in it. Who knows? Um, and then yeah, 10 star armor. Oh, another thing they mentioned about the armor is that it is 6%. Why this matters is because it's not going from 4.5 to 5.5, as opposed to going from 5.5 to 6. Um, though it's a small amount, it's only a 0.5 difference. Everything is multiplicative, so it does make a larger difference in the grand scheme of things. With only going up 0.5%, it's not as big of a jump as we had previously. Previously, we had a 4.5 to 5.5 jump, which made it so essentially if you had a situation where you were almost near best in slot, it was actually better for you to be back in LC augments mostly, as long as you had at least one of the augment capsules or a decent amount of a... Uh, basically, you could have like maybe one or two augments and be better than your original set of gear. So you would be able to get a massive amount of... Um, of damage even going over what you had previously when your previous gear was best in the slot so basically it is a jump it's not as big of a jump and that does make it a little less um impactful for having to jump to it instantaneously it means that if you want to wait for the other armors that are going to come out eventually because these are just coming from uh from the seal so likely we'll see uh the two stat armors and likely we'll see the three stat um defensive and pp based armors at some point um you are pretty safe with waiting for those it's totally okay to do so uh, and it's not nearly as much of a jump as the previous set of armors were. Another CC scratch. This one was kind of cool because of the uh, the dash. This seems to be very Olympic based, essentially. Um, even going with the whole fencing thing with the uh, dash thing. I was kind of concerned about that, but it's totally okay. And here's the first uh, uh, first of I told you so's um, that happens. And purple armors, of course. Yes, of course. The purple armor will return, chat. Yes, they'll release purple armor. It'll give you minus 50% uh, damage resistance but you'll get uh three times the power mm -hmm. totally absolutely um and the first of the i told you so's of sg support item select we go over this conversation every single time and again chat is always surprised when they do this when a new weapon comes out when a new unit comes out two things will happen you will get a new ac support scratch you get a new sg support scratch now previously they had a weapon come out at the end of an ac support scratch because of that, it created a very weird situation where players were about to upgrade or make new weapons, but they didn't have the support scratch to go along with it. Usually we have like a week or two or maybe like a month between when that comes out versus when the weapon releases. And we're like, hey, just wait. However, with the EX augment releases, it kind of messed with the schedule a little bit. So this AC support scratch and SG support scratch will have to do with the new weapons we'll be getting from Lucille, um, which you guys will see about in just a moment. The big thing to note here is it's an SG support scratch, meaning that it is SG. It's in-game earnable currency, not the end of the world. You can farm this up. Not a big deal. Uh, just make sure you're playing and you're farming your weekly SG amounts. That way you can go ahead. This is where you're mostly going to put this into unless you're using SG for fashion. And um, well, that is up to you. That is your choice. <laughs> I'm going to take the freebies when they pop up. Grand Gladius Soul S is going to be very powerful. Preset skill enhancement material not required. Also going to be very powerful. So. Your boy will be investing into those when they pop up. Uh, I think that is it for this here. These kind of look dumb. This is from a, I think either a six star or a five star armor. Um, and it's just a accessory, so nothing too crazy. Grand Glidasol is um, SG. Yep, it's from the SG scratch. And also some people are like, oh, it's already here. This is good. This is a good thing. Don't make it show up super, super further late. Make it show up when it's relevant. You make it show up super further late. That means everyone is already people who are actually going to make use of this have already used. They don't care.
All right, and moving forward, we have all ship matchmaking for the limited time quest, a grand series of ruins battles. Very, very good. All ship matchmaking. Again, anything all ship matchmaking is a W. If it's instant space, it should be all ship matchmaking. It seems like they're starting to move towards this consistently. I like to see it. I want to continue to see it. It should always be all ship matchmaking. Um, and then arcs record for Trania, crazy trial, rank two to be added. Very nice. We have the Shangri-La Frontier collab. I was scared of this. I was like, oh no, I'm absolutely going to get screwed over by the fact that I'm going to have to spend tons and tons of money again. Uh, no, we're good. We're, we're solid. Uh, no dash, no glide, no idle. We do have camos, even a CV camo for Sagar Zero's weapon, which is super cool. Everything looks good. The characters don't look uncanny or weird, which was a concern with some of the other scratches. If you guys remember the, uh, <laughs> ironically, it was the, um, what was the scratch chat? It was um, Seven Deadly Sins. That looked really uncanny, which is hilarious after Seven Deadly Sins kind of fell off so hard um, after one of their seasons of their animation. The Seven Deadly Sins scratch was very, very weird looking. <laughs> so, yeah, so the characters look good. They actually look good in NGS, which is awesome. Again, as we'll always say, the the AC scratch itself being all fashion, totally fine. We'd like to see more... Um, We'd like to see more collaborations in the future that have to do with combat related stuff like in the past, but we'll see it when we see it. These scratches actually look really good, so I'm actually fairly excited for them. Uh, Nameless City also is getting a new section in its rotation. I'm not sure if we mentioned Nameless City is going to be. Uh, I think we did. I think we mentioned Nameless City is going to be all shit matchmaking as well, but Nameless City is going to be all shit matchmaking if it wasn't mentioned already. Um, so this is good. They're going to have added in um, Mars battery and photon boost crates. Um, on a daily rotation and it's going to be a rotation between the different districts. So super, super cool. I feel like they should have split up the districts anyway into three different districts and then the daily rotations of the districts um, because having two districts accessible at once is kind of a pain in the ass um, to keep people in one location. I think is better overall. And then a new 11 star, the XCO weapon series is coming out as uh, a potential that boosts your photon blast gauge when attacking and can be enhanced further. My biggest concern here is um, they don't mention specifically its power comparatively to your Wingard. So it's possible it could be on par or stronger than Wingard. We don't know yet. Again, wait until it releases. We're going to run the math anyway. We'll let you know what it actually is comparatively once it comes out. I'm sure, plenty of people are going to be like, oh my God, Rip Wingard. Wingard's dead, so on and so forth. If it is with Rip Wingard and something else, it's about time. Now is the time frame for it to be a new weapon. It has been a very long time that we've had a Wingard, so having a new weapon is totally reasonable. Though it does suck because it's going to be weapon and then three new units. So it does mean that we need a, <laughs> we're going to need some augmentation transfer passes. I don't think it's going to be Rip Wingard. I think Rip Wingard will happen at 12 stars. Um, but again, this is just something to keep in mind. They do specifically mention that in the future, uh, I believe it's in October, you're going to be able to upgrade these weapons even further. Um, they mentioned it's going to be a newer system that's added. Some people are uh, speculating that's going to be Zig and be able to transform and upgrade your weapons from what they are currently. Um, we don't know 100% what it's going to be, but we'll have to see what they decide to go with. I need a mute in-game audio. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but we'll see what they decide to go with. Um, of course, we have a new uh, reward box with some cool stuff in it. That's super dope. I'm assuming these are going to have new EX skills. So we might see a new EX, EX, uh, EX skill combinations, but uh, we'll have to see. Um, this scratch is a W, in my opinion. This looks super cool. It's a Cosmic Strike for a scratch. You guys, uh, <laughs> those of my my Gunner friends out there, of course, Sega stays with their... I'm not sure what their obsession is, but it's always Rangers. It's always... Uh, so it's always rifles and katanas and guns of some sort. Um, our next weapon-based dash <laughs> is going to be EX Gunslinger running around with a, uh, with a gun. So there you go. My Gunner's out there. This looks amazing. I'm sorry for your wallets because this is an EX uh, scratch count bonus and you shall have it. We'll see. Um, and then interesting AC support item select. Huh? It's almost like I could have guessed it. It's almost like it happens every time a new weapon comes out. It's almost like they want to make sure they're available because the prices go to absolute ridiculousness every single time <laughs> new weapons release because supply and demand. Funny how that works. Um, but AC support item select, including Glan Gigas Maste S this time around. Um, and it, the big one is an N augment transfer pass here. 
This is a point of contention. I understand people being concerned about this here, being in the scratch count bonus. It depends on how far down it is. Um, shows a bit of level of greediness versus like, hey, you know, a bonus for scratching, right? So we'll have to see where these are in the scratch count bonus. This might be like 30 to 60 down, which would be which would really suck if it's that far down. Um, but these are always worth if you're going to spend any money. Normally, it's going to be in high dollar collaboration scratches or in AC support scratches. It's a free to play game. Expect that there's going to be place, uh, reasons for you to want to spend your money itself. But these are all things you can achievably gain in game without it being super ridiculously over like over tuned or over annoying. So this is totally fine. This one is one that's a little bit more difficult to get a hold of. So players are going to be a little bit more concerned about this. Um, but it's I look at it more as a bonus if I'm planning to scratch on this versus like not needing to. I got all of my gear to best and style without ever scratching and it wasn't super like crazy expensive. It took a bit of RNG. It took a bit of preparation, so it's totally reasonable to do. So that's what you're looking at doing. Then that is something you can get done without breaking the bank. Uh, next, they talked about the operational report. So a letter from the developers, uh, they talk about Mars parameters and Mars parameters. Basically, originally, the uh, the idea here behind this was they were going to make it so they were not balanced off of your gear. Um, now, that does make it easier to balance Mars for everyone being the same. However, they also realized that that was unfair to players who actually put an effort into the gearing process and actually gear themselves up. So they decided to change the process into uh, and again, this is last minute, so they apologize for it, but they were changing it to actually scale off of your gear. This is a very positive thing, because in the past we've had situations like Dark Blast, where Dark Blast did not scale off of your gear. The player eventually would outscale it um, and they would have to then buff Dark Blast. It also made it so your gear really didn't matter when it came to Dark Blast. So players didn't really care about gearing up in a lot of situations at that point. They were able to have a Dark Blast that was the same power as everyone else. Um, having it not scale off your parameters, while it could have been a little bit more balanced, it would have been very, very, it would have been lame, basically. Part of the fun of it is actually having extra power. So depending upon your opinion of the situation itself, you'll be able, uh, you'll either love this or you'll hate it. It just depends on where you, you stand in that situation. Some people don't want to have to gear up and they're like, oh, well, it would have been better if I didn't have to and I could just have the same power as everyone else um, versus the players that actually put time and effort into their gear which I think is the better out of going in the situation, rewarding those who actually put that effort in, um, having the uh, the power in their actual stuff. So this basically, it's a long way of saying that Mars will scale off of the player parameters of your gear. So super cool. Definitely happy to see that. Um, I'll be interested to see how it actually works with like your weapon, if it's going to be similar to that of uh, of the um, of what is it of, of like launcher or of uh, the turrets and things like that, the cannon um, with a bit of uh, extra changes, but we'll have to see. You will just inflate your BP. I mean, it depends on how it actually scales. So we'll wait until it actually comes out. Um, uh, but yeah, we thought it might it might have been BP based. That would have, that would have been really really bad. But it might work like the cannon. It may work differently. But it says based off the player's attributes. So we'll have to see. Um, they then oh, Caro actually streamed. Holy crap, yo! Welcome Raiders. Welcome, Caro. I almost accidentally banned Aqua. I didn't even mean to. Oh, that's right. Caro's in the new place. Holy shit. Welcome, everyone, from Caro's chat. We're doing our uh, review of the headline. Make sure you guys follow Caro. If you're not already following Caro, follow Caro. He's going to start streaming more often. So we're, uh, we're going to get those going for you guys. You're going to have a good time. Um, but yeah, so we're at the 11 star weapons and the 10 star units. So they talk about the weapons and the units. They mentioned the weapons are going to be moving towards a. Um... <laughs> What's up, Raijin? Um, So they mentioned that the, uh, the 11 star weapons are going to be moving towards a system where they're going to be able to upgrade them in the October update. They mentioned weapons are going to be able to be strengthened further, um, but they mentioned certain weapons will be used for that strengthening further. So what I think is going to happen here in the situation chat is you're going to want this 11 star weapon. And I think what's going to happen is it's going to upgrade into another weapon. And I believe they're going to be pushing this in a way that is, it's going to kind of coincide with new weapons releasing to let players kind of invest further into their weapons. So we'll have to see how it works out. But uh, when it releases, we'll talk about it. And with 10 star units, they talk about the fact that there will be no EX augments on units, which is a massive, massive W with the way that EX augments currently work. If they were to release EX augments on units, you would be basically forced into re augmenting all of your units. Um, which would suck, which would suck major. And um, yeah, no EX augments on units, only on weapons means that we only have one concern, and that's if they ever add another EX augment slot. 
I think 3x augment slots is kind of the better way to do it to keep it balanced. So hopefully they stay to that and they just give us more EX augment combinations. Um, and uh, yeah, it would be overall a W for everyone, um, at least as far as I'm concerned in that situation. They even mentioned that uh, it, during this, by the way, guys, they even mentioned that you can safely upgrade your units without having to worry about it. So they know of the concern that players have when it comes to EX augments. So uh, they then mentioned the balance adjustments for force. Chad, this is just the headline of me saying I freaking told you so. <laughs> so a lot of players were concerned because they didn't see force on the um, on the roadmap that force was completely forgotten about or anything along those lines. It wasn't. It's almost like the roadmap is a framework. And things are going to be added and changed. Yep. Crazy. Anyway, um, they talk about the balance adjustments for force, force going to be getting some balance adjustments. And the way that they talk about them specifically is in a way of buffing things. Um, they mentioned that Talus will also be a part of it, and their concern is that Talus will be the only option for Tector um, with these balance adjustments coming forward because of what they'll be doing for Force. So they're kind of trying to time things or something along those lines. I'm not sure if they, the way they were talking about it, they were saying that um, this is going to come out and then Talus, or then, you know, uh, uh, basically this is going to come out around the same time as Tector, or Tector is going to come out and then it's going to have, you know, just be wand related specifically for a while and then Talus is coming later. But basically, they're going to be working on some adjustments overall into a way that both weapons will be usable. And it sounds like Force is getting a buff basically by the way they're talking about it. And that's a good thing. We definitely do need this. Balance adjustments for Force, force definitely needs balance adjustments, but I do believe it actually needs a bit more of a rework. It doesn't really do anything interesting just yet, so we'll have to see what they decide to go with. Maybe they go out on the lines of a renewal. We'll have to just wait and see. But Big W Force is getting seen. I mean, granted, we knew that it was seen, but people look at it like it's not because they don't mention it. Communication is always important with your player base, so it's good that they mention these things. But like, it's also very obvious when these things are happening. Just because it's not mentioned does not mean it's not being looked at or it's not being worked on. It's always better when they do actually talk about it to everyone. Um, are there any plans to use EX augments for armor? The answer was no, and we love that. Um, it's difficult to fight smaller boss enemies like Bujin because of the camera uh, zooms in closer than usual during battle. Any plans to fix this? Basically, the TLDR was yes, and it sounded like they were working on um, changing camera controls in general. So TLDR is yes. Would it be possible to select six or more materials once when, um, once when enhancing our equipment? Um, the TLDRs they're working on going up to 10, it sounds like, but they weren't going past that from what I understand. Now, I did mention in my, uh, while we were watching this to my chat that this is actually something that you can go past very, very easily. Um, if they were to increase this, they just simply need to make it or change the interface. So whenever you use any more than five, it would use two of any support item that go along with it. So if you use five or so if you use six, it uses two up to using 10, it would use two. But if you use 11, it would use three of the support items. So every five that you would use, it would use another support item, essentially. So it would allow you to use more of them. Honestly, I feel like you should be able to go upwards of like maybe 50 or 100. It'd be very, very nice. And then if you just didn't have enough support items, it would only affect a certain number of items that, or a certain number of those items you had, or it wouldn't let you use all those items with support items if you didn't have enough support items to, to, uh, to support it in the first place. Um, they again go into the satellite information, which tells us that we get more for the soundtrack coming up. So the soundtrack for volume four to six between. Um, oh, where is it between now and September, basically. The sympathy um, concert is getting a Blu-ray that you can then purchase and the purchase is coming with the item code. So that's pretty dope. There's going to be a campaign for using Mars to get a bunch of free items. We like that. It looks like star gems. Looks like money is involved. Um, special accessories, apparently, too. We also have a growth and exchange campaign. So to go along with when they're updating the seal, um, you also are going to have a growth and exchange. So we will be able to get things like beta reactors and star gems daily, which is awesome. Um, so more money, more star gems, and it's used, something to use our growth mints on, which I'm sure plenty of us have tons of that we don't use for anything. Um, plus boosts and weakened enemies. Boosts, good. Weakened enemies don't really feel like is necessary. Lasile is not that difficult, so I would like to see them not do these sort of things in the future, but it's already going to happen. So 
basically they want Lucille to be easier for people to jump into and enjoy as much as possible, but that's just one of those things where I want it for me, not for everyone. Um, and then PSO 2 Day is getting revamped. So moving forward, there'll be a six day event for PSO 2 Day. So it's going to be from the 1st to the 3rd, and then from the 21st to the 23rd. And this is going to discontinue premium PSO 2 Day, meaning that everyone will have access to PSO 2 Day no matter what. You'll get your standard um, bonuses no matter what. And then premium set users will get extra gifts. There's also going to be a PSA commemorative set items on um, like special campaigns and AC scratch tickets. So pretty cool there. It sounds like they're actually going to be giving out AC scratch tickets for premium set users, which is fantastic. I'm not sure how that's going to work out just yet. We'll have to wait until NC. But it sounds like basically premium is going They're basically restructuring some of the premium rewards, which sounds more like, you know, you're getting some in-game currency for just being premium, which is a massive dub um, as far as I'm concerned. And they show off all the different versions of uh, of, of Ash, man. We have Ash from from original PSO online. We have from PSO2 and then we have Ash from uh, from NGS. We don't have Ash from PSU because Ash didn't exist in PSU. It was Isan Weba. And that's it. Our next headline is going to be uh, September 3rd, I believe. Where is it? There it is. It's going to be September 3rd. So it's going to be at the beginning of not next month, but the month after. So it's a little ways away. Um, but we will get to see more information about uh, the October. Up I'm sorry, the September updates and possibly some information maybe in October. We will have to see. But all in all, pretty W headline. A lot of things that I did not expect to see, um, even though we mostly knew what was coming. Um, and augmentation transfer passes are going to be a very, very hot topic right now as players are seeing new weapons and new units, so everyone needs to use them. So it's something that I'm sure we'll hear about more in the future. We're going to uh, probably talk about a lot more of that over the course of the next couple of videos, maybe highlight some ways you guys can get a hold of these and augmentation transfer passes because they are going to be very important for you guys as far as getting your gear set up with the new units and new weapons. I think it's actually a good time for new units, and new weapons. Um, hopefully the Aerodin weapons or sorry, the new weapons that are coming out don't immediately eclipse our current wing guards. If they do, it's about time. It's totally OK, but I don't think they will. I think they'll be probably about on par, maybe a bit better, depending upon the circumstances. In a worst case, wing guard might still be a quick swap to go over to, though I may hold on to my wing guard um, if it is still usable. If it's not like a massive difference, we'll wait and then transfer over to a new weapon when we know exactly what's going to go on. If anything else, make sure to take care of events, make sure to take care of tasks that will make sure that you have access to as many augmentation transfer passes as you possibly can. And if you haven't already farmed Nameless, um, you will be farming Nameless very soon. So definite W to all of the cross um, cross ship content. That is something that needs to continue to happen for all instance based content as it releases. I want to see it for Urgent Quest soon. That'll be the massive W. If you see it for Urgent Quest chat, it's a freaking wrap. That is going to be some of the best setup content we have. Um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, those of you guys watching over on YouTube, join us over on Twitch, man. We're live two days out of the week. We're live every Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, whenever their headlines, we're live early in the morning. But other than that, we do go live at 12 p.m. EST. We're live usually from 12 p.m. to anywhere between 6 to 8 p.m. Doing all kinds of crazy stuff, playing PSO2, playing, uh, I mean, uh, we're playing First Ascent recently along with Skulls. We're playing other things in the mix as well. So we'll have to see how that, uh, that all shakes up. Chat, say goodbye to YouTube. Be nice to them, because if you're not, they're going to uh, they're never going to join you guys. And those of you guys over on YouTube, thanks for watching all the way end. Let me know if there's anything I missed in the comments below. Let me know what you guys are excited for. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, so if you want to keep up with more. As always, thank you to the channel members. You guys are fantastic, and I'll see you all later. Take care, my friends. Peace out.